once you see it go live, you can close that window. Okay. The second thing we have to open up. So we're live there. We close that. She sent those to you? Or? No, they're just on that. So it gives you the, the pop up. Get rid of that. Minimize this. Just the agenda. Yeah. Now I'm just going to pull up the two presentations they're going to have. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, that one so from here, we're going to go back to this.
Yeah, they turn it off. Testing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm Grab yourself a chair so we can extend the burners out. I usually just say it's because I've been sitting once I got off work, I was home, sat on my computer chair. <laughs> so I was, you know, wasn't going to do anything, so I'd come back. So I just sat there and I would just watch it. So I don't stand man. And just, you know, I just go home. Yeah, I sit all day at work. Exactly. So, so I'm not getting mixed up. Yeah. 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 All right, you have my number if you need me. Oh, we're in the pack building. So. Okay, thank you. And then just shoot me a text when it's done. I'll run back. Right. Thanks. 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 yeah Are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Testing. Testing. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 10th, 2023. Okay. So the date on the attachment is yes. not accurate, so we will change that. Thank you. Motion. Yeah. 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 Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. This week is Buildings and Grounds and Security Recognition Week. On behalf of our Board of Education and our administration team, I would like to thank all of them for all their hard work and dedication to our students, staff, and faculty. In so many different ways, they all play a critical role in the health and safety of our students, staff, and faculty. So again, on behalf of our entire team, huge thank you. In a little while, actually, we will be able to showcase um, some of the wonderful work of our Buildings and Grounds um, Department as part of our facilities update presentation. Uh, budget updates, right? We are very, very involved in our 2023-24 budget development process. At this time, um, the sales has met with all central administrators, building and department leaders, and has received the administrator's analysis of this year's budget and their needs for the next school year. 
Ms. Gillis and I have met multiple times um, to continue to build and work on our proposed 23-24 budget. Our first budget presentation is scheduled for February 7th, which is our next Board of Education meeting. Uh, next, I do want to take a moment to apologize um, to our community for our communication delays as it relates specifically to our transportation routes. Um, it's certainly um, no secret, not just West Babylon, right, but other um, districts throughout the state, right, uh, continue to have a shortage with regards to bus drivers and monitors. Um, we, of course, continue to interview, continue to add, um, you know, additional uh, drivers, right, as, as we receive them. Um, however, the reality is that we need to do better, right? We need to communicate um, better and more timely with regards to transportation um, delays, and we'll do so. Uh, reminder to all of our community members and parents, if you have any questions or concerns, so please contact the appropriate uh, person listen, listed in our chain of communication. Uh, so as an example, if you have a question with regards to athletics, you would reach out to Mr. Howard um, or Mr. Hanley. Uh, if you have a question or concern uh, with regards to transportation, then Mr. Granary and so on and so forth. That chain of communication is on the website with everyone's email and everyone's phone number. And that's all I have for this section of the agenda, Ms. Campesano. We have a couple of uh, presentations for you, including some special guests from JFK. Thank you, Statements of West Babylon Teachers Association, West Babylon Administrators Association, BSEA representatives, Student Association representatives, PTA Council representatives, Residents on agenda items only. On agenda items. Thank you, Dr. Family. Okay, I'm going to switch the order so that we can have our special guest from JFK go first. So I would like to invite Ms. Hoffman up to please introduce all of our special guests. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer Hoffman, the Director of Humanities, and my name is Haley. My name is Anna. Okay, and Haley and Anna are joining us today because we just finished, well, they just finished a writing unit, right, um, in right before the winter break, so in December. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes to share their uh, their writing with you. They did some wonderful opinion writing. Um, sorry, I'm just going to come over here for the mask. You guys can So research shows, shows that the ability to write arguments is essential to the success in college and the workforce. So we start at a very young age writing argument um, and opinion papers in kindergarten, actually, uh, all the way up until 12th grade. So in West Babylon, every single grade has an argument writing unit. Um, so today we're going to see how that starts. Okay, so this should look familiar to you guys, right? Um, so the, the unit in first grade they start with bringing in a collection of toys or a collection that they have. And we know that um, all of our first graders have a lot of collections in their homes. <laughs> so they bring it into school. This is an example of little, little pets there. Um, but the unit uh, includes judging their toys and their collections and explaining which one is the best and why it might be the best. They move on to writing reviews, maybe about a movie, restaurant, a video game, or a vacation spot. And they also write reviews about folk. There we go. Um, so some of the things that they learn throughout the unit um, is to write their opinion, obviously. So they use words like I think. They give lots of reasons, like the first reason is, also another reason is. Um, they add details. Uh, they talk back to the reader, right? Like some people say, or I still think that. They might quote experts, and they politely disagree. Right, um, and they, they might say that they acknowledge the other side of the opinion as well. Okay, so I'm going to read this one first, and then um, then we'll have our, our special guest read there. So this one is um, about pizza, right? Do you like pizza? In my opinion, I think pepperoni pizza is the best. One reason it's yummy. Another reason it's not spicy. My last reason is no one uh, likes it except me. Some people plan. Uh, 
Some people like plain pizza, but I like pepperoni pizza the best. These are all the reasons I like pizza. So you can see some of the teaching there and you can see um, really organizationally how they uh, organize their puppets. Okay, and are you ready? In my opinion, I deserve a puppy because I would feed it every day and I would walk it every day. Also, it would be my best and I would go in my backyard every day and play with it if I... I would love my puppy these are and take care of it. These are all the reasons why I I believe I deserve a pup. Some people have a lot of toys to play with, but I want a puppy to play with. <laughs> Hey, thank you. Did, did you get one? <laughs> Some good reasons there, right? Okay, I'm going to read one other one. Um, would you rather go pumpkin picking or flower picking? In my opinion, I think pumpkin picking is the best. One reason is that you can pick a big pumpkin to bring home. Um, I have to say some of this. I haven't deciphered all the way. Um, but second, oh, thank you. Second, uh, when you bring the pumpkin home, you can, that's the one word I just couldn't on. You can blank. Oh, or if you can carve it, right? Because the carve it is there. Yeah. So there was like one little part I wasn't sure. Uh, carve it, and then you put it in, you put it um, anywhere. Uh, I think plus you could put a light is the end. Good reasons for being convicted. Okay. Haley, you want to read it from there or you want to read it from your hand? Okay. Do you like pot for pig? In my opinion, I think pot for pig is better than candy land. My first reason is in pot for pig, you get surprised. The, the pig pops pop. My second reason is. The pig is wearing a chef outfit. It is so silly. Ha ha. My last reason is it eats burgers. Yuck. Some people like candy lands, but I still like pop the pig the best. These are all the reasons I like pop the pig the best. Okay, great job. Um, and I totally looked that up after I read your review. I was like, what is um, pop the pig, right? Uh, I knew what candy that was. Uh, okay. Uh, do you like cutie cuts? This is another one I had to read. I had to look up. I would rather cutie cuts um, or LOLs, um, but I still like cutie cuts. In my opinion, cutie cuts, because you have to brush its hair uh, to find out what it is. One reason is because you can cut you can cut their hair even more. Another reason is because it's adorable. My last reason is because the eyes are so cute. Some people like LOLs, but I still like cutie cuts. These are all the reasons why I like cutie cuts more than LOLs. Let's look at the other, the other toy. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for listening, and thank you for all the sharing. Really good time. And is, there, is there any questions about our opinion writing? No, but I'd like to speak to the parents of the girl who doesn't have a puppy yet. <laughs>
I just, I love all the details. Where else? That was just amazing. I am just so impressed by your writing. I have to say, whoever wrote the L, the one about the LOL, my Taylor would have voted for the LOL. They would have argued really kindly, but you really would have had a strong opinion about the LOL. Great job. I'm glad that you have copy. That's awesome. And you, I mean, just amazing. Can I see your art there? I couldn't see it. Love it. Love it. I have a little something for you on behalf of our team here to thank you for being here. We love public speaking. I mean, huge round of applause. <laughs> Welcome. I'll see you at the like, day, okay? I like how she left out the fact that they have two books. <laughs> right. Very creative. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. So, um, this for the last one. Make your way up. We have our next presentation. So just to kind of set the um, theme for today, a lot of information will be shared by the Philip, um, you know, we'll be coming in as well, right? Um, really, no, uh, thank you to uh, the last one, why the whole ground team, yeah. mechanics, our maintenance team, right, um, are, we can't, you know, we're, I'm going to say we're in the business of children. Right, um, educating all of you academically, socially, emotionally, right? Um, you know, having wonderful days together, learning together, and socializing together. We can't do that, right, if our buildings are not where they need to be, right? Um, it is certainly not an easy task. And again, a huge thank you to our facilities department. So, the start of this will be some quick highlights, right, in terms of things that we have worked on, some important applications, which you saw in our newsletter. Um, and then we're going to Talk about some plans work, right that we have in the district, um, kind of some upcoming things and things that have been completed, and then you'll see by school some priority areas, right? But the priority areas for tonight, right? Uh, we're not going to go into the priority areas because I would like the board, I'd like us to schedule separate meetings. Those are part of our building condition surveys, right? They're highlighted in really priority order. Um, so at those workshop meetings, then our architects, right, PBS, they would be there with us, right? And then we need to dive deeply into those priority items there, right? But this ultimately does go on our website. So I did, I thought it would, we thought, right, the last was maybe I thought it was important for us to have them listed there, even though we're not going to go into detail right here. So that should anyone go to the trust the presentation, they could see that those are priorities. Okay. Um, so, take it away, Mr. Lathwes. I just want you to speak into the mic because yes, we have this wonderful audience at home, right? We want to make sure that they hear us. Okay, William. I perfect. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, thank you. I'm going to speak close for all your help and assistance as well as my family. Um, I wouldn't be able to make this presentation out yet. Yeah, thanks so much, sure. All right, so here's a quick outline. We're going to go with uh, the newsletter recap and highlights, like uh, Fairly said. Uh, projects planned for the spring on um, projects planned for the summer, uh, infrared roof scans for the senior high school, the five-year condition survey, which we're going to um, go relatively quickly on it, and um, and then the capital reserve, which um, we feel as well. Okay, so here's a couple of highlights from our newsletters. Um, this is what the old payroll office and student services look like. If you're not familiar with these, we're going to have them on our website under the facilities tab. On top of that, this is also the payroll, then it turned into the student services. Uh, this is the business office and business wing that was uh, completely done over. Mind you, all this staff was all this done was by our internal staff. The majority of this work was all done by them. And this is what the junior high school looks like after we did the upgrades. So here's our, pro our projects plan for spring of 2023. Uh, the Forest Avenue and South Bay Elementary removal of the underground oil tanks. They're scheduled right now for the February break. Um, in unfortunately, if weather permits, uh, we also could do it in April break. Uh, junior high school LED drops in continuation. You want to continue doing that project as you saw from earlier pictures. 
The senior high school landscape in the front uh, bushes in the front that were damaged due to that heat wave this past summer. The Turco Avenue shed build and installation. Uh, filter replacements described. This includes uh, water filters, mer filters, uh, fan filters, all filters in the district. Uh, continuation of electrical upgrades uh, for all the newly installed um, air conditioners. The spring cleaning of all the schools, of course, and then the boiler door replacement for the senior high school with order for staff order. So they will hopefully get in here by the same time. Um, project, uh, projects planned for the summer right now are uh, the Tucker Avenue and JFK office upgrades. Uh, JFK new playground is in the proposed budget for this year or next year. Um, senior high school uh, gym floor refinish. That's one from the one we received damage from that last incident occurred. They're going to be refinishing on the June 26th that week up. Uh, junior high school boiler repair. So we have boiler number two that's down. Boiler three was completely repaired. Uh, for the two, hopefully we'll get that done by the summer. And then I want to focus on preventing the maintenance this year, big time. Um, boilers, we have 21 boilers district-wide that need some attention. So I would like to start tackling these um, these boilers, all the preventive maintenance, flushing them down, as well as the fan rooms and units. So all this stuff is going to be done in-house. Uh, we're also going to do some floor repairs and maintenance as needed district-wide, and additional drop ceiling replacements and LED upgrades throughout the district. So this is the four Savvy and Santa Club that we've done not too long ago. This is our maintenance crew that did this wonderful work. Pretty much they did everything from painting the LED lights, the drop ceiling. So this is what the work that they did. And this is the proposed work areas that we're going to use JRK and Tucker. Same thing. We want to make it look a little bit cleaner, nicer. And that's the way we want to go about it. It's going to be done all in-house except for the floors. Uh, summer project or summer bond project for 2023. Um, it's going to be South Bay. The new water lines, the RPG, the driveways. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the slides from the capital project. Or um, project, sorry. Uh, so this is senior high school uh, infrared roof scans. Um, as you, I don't know if you guys can see the mouse. Okay, so pretty much all these roof scans were done between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, on one of these units. I can't remember the date. So this blue area over here is pretty much dry. Anything that's wet is wet. So the lighter, the redder the color, the wetter it is. And you can see the scan right here. On the next slide, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, more of the So as you can tell, all this area is wet. All this area is dry. So this is a big, this is a good picture right here to describe the areas around the senior high school week of how wet they were. If you guys have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, so here's a five-year building condition survey. Um, it's pretty much the intent of the five-year uh, plan is to identify the current uh, condition of all the buildings in the West Baltimore School District. Um, Karen Lisa was our, was our BDS architect. Um, Carl Weber is the engineer. And myself, we kind of the whole walkthrough of the district to pretty much identify everything and how the district is. Um, pretty much is going to serve as a tool for us to actively manage the capital projects, future things, things that we can handle uh, in district. I actually use the building condition survey to identify what projects are going to happen in summer or breaks or either things that we can do to try to save money. But there's also items that we can't handle, kind of like the bond work that we just onboarded. Anthony, the, the wet spots on the roof. Yes, ma'am. Are we moving heat through those? Uh, yeah, so water is um, pretty much um, it's a really good kind of uh, heat. So what happens when it gets wet, that's the reason when you got to go from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. It holds its temperature, and then you'll see the difference. The blue is cold, the wet is red. So you're going to see you're also getting water moisture coming down, and you have fat moisture, and it's, that's how you actually are able to identify it. That's why you have to do that. A big change of the That's all coming out anyway. That's all yeah, that's all out. out. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's all. It's just pretty much, um, I guess, that's right. more confirmed all yeah. the leaks that we had in the lot of the house up there. Um, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of cool to see that. Yeah. Uh, so this is the five-day condition survey. We pretty much um, did priority one and priority two. Um, but like uh, uh, Carly said, we're going to actually tackle this later on in a different meeting. So I'm not going to go too detailed. Just kind of buzz right through this. And, and the other piece for the meeting, right, as we go through that, right, any other areas that, you know, again, we've done walkthroughs, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure that the area that we noticed in walkthroughs have been identified already in the past, but it gives us an opportunity to go through that right and yes they will go with it and find a priority one and two but there may be other areas that we as a team feel that really even though that's priority 
right. three or four, right? For us, that really is priority one, right? So we'd like us to do that, right? So that is really what I'd like us to kind of buy deeply into those so that we can all write your thoughts and opinions and then you can give us direction right on the team's priority. And we're going to do that at a workshop meeting. Yeah, several workshop meetings. Yes, where the public can attend but not speak and just right, and observe the work of the board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so this is the senior high school uh, projects that have been completed. Uh, added some some pump that can condensate and it pretty much we had oil company come in. They installed new um, pumps that actually I don't know if any of you are familiar with the high school. Last year or year before, there was tons of smoke always coming out, almost like a water pump at four months. So we actually repaired that whole thing. We're actually saving a lot more money this way. And actually our boilers are going to extend the life. So we had that, we did that. A lot of it was in-house. We did have to outsource it a little bit, but the cost was relatively some good cost savings in that aspect. Um interior doors in the main office and guidance office, we installed new door handles um, as required through the DCS um, survey. Uh drainage. Around that area, uh, around the, the gym area. What we did is we actually vacuumed out all the drains, cleaned them out because we didn't want to put an extra drain if we didn't need to, but we serviced all the drains. In the event that it's still flying, we have to add one. That's actually another item that we can add in there, but I wanted to go with the, the most cost effective repair first, and then we kind of escalate instead of kind of moving. Sorry to say. Anthony, can I just yeah. answer you a question? I mean, why it's in my head. Yes, it was an issue in the fitness room with the air conditioning. Oh, uh, yes. Has that been? Yes, and that actually has been repaired. That was repaired this summer. Um, it was it actually caught on fire. So it was an insurance claim, and we actually just installed it. Um, there's actually kind of cool pictures on the newsletter of them replacing the line of the fitness center. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, so here are the projected um, the projects that are scheduled um, the roof replacement on the 2024. Uh, the conversion of the LED lights in all teaching spaces, that's going to be for the EPC. Uh, windows at room 173 and 171, um, that's pretty much a rescue window. Uh, DDS identified that the, the height is 48 inches versus the 40 inches that it's supposed to be on the code. So what we're going to do is it's scheduled to be repaired. We're just going to put a permanent step that you need compliance, and we're going to add to do that in-house instead of having the house ocean for that. Um, exterior doors at the boiler room, um, kind of already stated there on the previous slide. They're on backward, but we're going to get them and we're going to install them as soon as they can. Uh, senior, high school, uh, senior high school priority one, these one slide, but I'm kind of just go right through it. It's kind of just give you a general idea of some of the items that are priority one and the cost kind of associated to Again, priority one, major repairs, continuation. Senior high school major systems. So this is also another slide priority one as identified by the BES and ourselves. This is just a general idea of what it might cost for general systems. Systems just include um, like rooftop units, fire alarms, and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Junior high school um, project uh, projects that are scheduled. Uh, again, convert LED lights all throughout the district. That is also going to be on the EPC. Eagle Hall replacement water sharing seats as you guys have been picking out the seat. That project is also going to be scheduled for summer for the department's meeting. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay with that, but we're good to go. Um, we don't have to state. Is, <laughs> all right, replace basketball back, um, basketball backstops. So those already been ordered. Once they're in, we're going to install them. Um, projects that have been completed, pretty much replace all um, exit lights, emergency lighting. That's already been done. And occasionally they go out, we just replace them immediately. We have them in stock. We actually have a, uh, an inspection with the fire marshal for lighting. So we should pass that with fine out. Um, again, like the other side of the high school, the prior, uh, priority one major item of the care. Um, pretty much, I'm not going to go through each one. These are right areas that we've all identified, right? And we're walking through the high school, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is right. All those here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of items on there. Um, this slide's going to be on the website. So if anybody's interested, yes. they're ready A continuation of major items, priority one, same thing. Um, major systems. Right, four or seven projects that have been scheduled is upgraded BMS system. That's actually going to be done district-wide through the EPC as well. And then upgrading LED lights again to the EPC. 
uh, energy performance contract that you're using that um, Projects that have been completed are for replacements of remaining old deteriorated, uh, deteriorated floors, all the tiles. And we also identified that some of them might be a little bit worn out. So we'll replace them accordingly, depending on, on that. But for the most part, they were all replaced. Um, we'll also replace two wall packs and one exit light. Uh, for Savvy Elementary Priority One, major repairs. And since Forreston had that many priority ones, we have priority, yeah, some priorities. You can just give you guys some um, references and things. And these are your systems. Yeah, but let me back up. Yes, ma'am. You said you've never replaced floors. Yeah. Tile, tile floors? Uh, uh, how old are those floors? Well, um, I'm not sure how old they are, but some of them um, have been popping up. And whenever they pop up, what I have been doing now, um, we need to schedule an abatement or we just report. That was my question. Are they friable? Uh, no, no, no more friable. That's the good thing. But once you get to that point that I'm going to rip the floor out, I just made it all at once this way and done with it. Don't have to do it with it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, four seventies. Uh, I think I went forward. Um, uh, Santa Fog Elementary. Um, these are the scheduled projects. Um, again, the DMS system is going to be done with EPC, upgrading the LED lights. Also, with the energy performance contract, we're actually going to be adding three bottle fillers and continuing and continuing to fix fixtures as necessary. That one. Um, install the door, the custodian office, the boiler room. Uh, to be fire retarded and provide ventilation uh, before spaces was completed. That was the one we did in the gym, uh, all the vents that we've done during summer, and the cafeteria slash gym, I guess that's what we call it, and the space space. I'm sorry if I've been skipping through the slides. We actually have photos of our custodial staff, and you guys are going to look, look back. These are all the ones custodial staff, sorry. Um, Santa Fog major repairs, uh, priority major systems as well. Uh, South Bay Elementary. Uh, so this, these are the projects that are scheduled. The paving, pretty much all the bond work. It's going to be none of the sidewalks, the asphalt playground, the boiler feed tank. That's also going to be in the course of the main water line and all the other things that came with um, that project. Uh, the projects that have been completed, we provided lighting to the fan room upstairs. Um, and we also investigated some electrical chips that we were having into one of our rooftop units. So that was repaired in house. And then the roof, we actually had to call out a vendor and it sealed up the water heat. And we're kind of monitoring if there's any other leaks. But as of right now, today, we haven't had any additional leaks. Uh, South Bay priority one and major repairs, as well as major systems. Uh, Took a any projects that have been scheduled, uh, replace steam traps. That's actually part of the EPC, but it's um, they're going to start up in different schools. So that's going to be district wide. I think it's part of the scope. Um, upgrade expanding, of course, the, uh, the BMS system and providing lighting for the library teaching spaces. All this, all these items are going to be tackled with the energy performance contract. Um, Tucker Avenue priority two major repairs. Um, all the priority ones were taken care of. So we were focusing on twos. Uh, Took out any priority one in major systems and two. So these are the major systems that are recommended by BBS when that building is Uh JFK for uh, projects that have been scheduled uh, replace the scene traps. That's going to be done by UPC. Same thing with the BMS and also the LED lights. Uh, projects that have been completed is the replacing of the, the remaining um, floors that were damaged. Uh, those were replaced. Uh, recently, or we blew, or um, however we go about it, we've identified more. That's part of the summer work that we will tackle those as well. Uh, priority one and major repairs, and priority one major systems. Project scheduled for the bus garage interior walls. So these are just uh, that's the gap that we've been identifying with the BBS and trying to figure out if they're doing the goal for the course. They're pretty much going to give us a different uh, avenue of how we're going to do that. That's scheduled for a later date. Um, they're also going to be upgrading the LEDs and better lighting system. That's also covered by the EPC. Uh, the anticipated scheduled driver's stand. So the training is just that's just anticipated. So once we get our course, we might we can have some policy of training issues that we need to tackle them. So we just met um, last week, right? Yes, we just met earlier this week or or end of last week. I'm not sure. 
um, with the team to review some uh, preliminary results. And I had shared with the board, right, um, some information in terms of the wall, right, that no moving was there, which is great. However, the issue over there is that the land over there, right? Um, so it's it's not um, a simple fix, right? So that is going to be discussed in terms of um, the the um, during one of those workshops, right? Because the soil, right, is what's most concerning, right? <laughs> um, so it's like the question: Oh, can you just pick up a building and just put a building somewhere else, right? Um, now, right, so we're going to have to, you know, talk about um, several possibilities, right, several things, you know, several options for us to consider with regards to, um, you know, that, that particular building. It is safe to be open, right, yeah. you know, um, so that was reiterated during during our meeting. Um, again, it's just not a simple fix of, oh, just rip up the floor and put anyone down. And, um, um, is, is part of the problem that the soil is always wet? It's a combination of low water table, uh, so it's pretty much it be, the water table is really low around that area. There's a swamp area around there. Okay. That's the reason why some of the drywalls probably won't work. So that's where you go deep, deep. But the boring mm -hmm. that was also coming from DBS and us know specifically what the soil condition is. So the drainage drain would not work in that situation. We can possibly do French drains, but then where do we divert the water to? If a, information to us right for our follow-up um, for our follow-up meeting um you know and it's you know similar piece right uh, they were shared right in terms of even the south bay parking lot area right that you know in reviewing the soul burns results from there that is that whole section the area right that um it's coming up the, you know they're coming up with numbers that they necessarily weren't expecting right but it does make sense based on also the bus garage right in terms of situation so the original plans that they had made for drainage may need to be adjusted, meaning are there additional ones, but wider, not as deep, right? So a couple of other yeah. variations yeah. that in terms of shallow pool because of the soil. So um, they kind of gave us what they had up until then, and then once they received the final report, we were going to review them. It's a question on the slide that had the uh, outside junior high school and then, um, tennis court resurfacing. Mm -hmm. That was the cost to fix as is. I know we briefly touched on it at one point, re, re uh, envisioning that area. That was your just estimate to fix the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In time. Yeah. Right. Right. If we want to kind of revamp that, right? And that's why I think it's important for us to really kind of drive deeply into that, right? Because then, and the, the other piece is yes, you know, we'd like to, you know, shift that to one of the first things that we, you know, tackle. I think as a whole, you know, in terms of I know that that we're all concerned about that, right? Um, so that is the opportunity to talk about you know something different back there, right? Um, in terms of land, parking, right? Kind of all those different variations. And yes, yeah, those numbers were just replacing numbers. Gotcha. And this always worked to project over five years. I guess no, it's, it's pretty much to be a projection of five years with priorities. And different priorities on how you should start, how you would like to tackle it. But at the end, it's always construction of the board and how we would like to tackle it. Yeah, they recommend, right? Mm -hmm. As in every year, the, the building fish survey is updated. So those could shift as the year goes on, if something happens, something right. can be pushed out. Mm -hmm. As buildings and grounds addresses different things internally, then they yeah. go back and adjust it. Even though that's done. Never had to play. Not that every year, but over five years. We did a survey how many years ago and said we had the $24 million worth of work. Oh, this is probably around the Okay. Uh, bus garage priority one, the major repairs and major systems. Uh, driver's stand priority uh, major repairs as well as major systems. <laughs> and I'm passing off to the 
So how do we pay for this? Yes. <laughs> so um, there are a few different ways that uh, school districts pay for their um, facility upgrades and projects. Um, one was the bond that we passed that's specific to what the voters approved, which was the roof and um, South Bay. Um, all these other items, it either comes from fund balance, the transfer over, which every year um, part of the budget allows for certain dollars to be transferred over for in-house and for um, repairs. Um, to be able to maintain over the five years and to be able to build a savings, let's say, a district would need to create um, and establish a capital reserve. Um, it's, we used to have one. So as of now, right now we don't, and it would be great if um, we are recommending the board to um, create a capital reserve and for this year, um, it would basically be established and funded through um, possibly other money that are already in reserves um, or excess fund balance at the end of the year. The reserves, um, the creation of the capital reserves requires voter approval, so it would be on our proposition. If a few of the items would be establishing the purpose of the reserve, um, the amount of the reserve, the probable term, and where the funds are being created from to go into the reserve. A lot of school districts do um, a reserve for let's say 10 years for 10 million. And over the course of 10 years, you can only put in the max of $10 million. So all those um, terms would be discussed between the board and decided amongst them. Um, and a few times um, districts say in a year you can't put more than a certain amount in. Um, so all those terms can be um, discussed. And um, the reason why people do a, a capital reserve is to ma maintain their systems and um, projects throughout the year. So it's not after so many years you go out for a bond, it's being able to, to save up to be able to do some of these um, capital projects that were in the five year. So the recommended um, proposition would be an additional proposition in the budget. The first proposition would be the voters approving the budget. The second one would be the voters approving the creation and funding of um, a capital reserve. It would be capital reserve one, and it would be going for future projects. Those future projects um, could be a list of the items that are in the five-year capital um, building condition survey. So it would be discussed, it would be written in the proposition, what we can, um, why we're funding it. Um, again, it's placed on the ballot and it would be uh, number two. So they would have two propositions to vote on. Special thanks to the buildings, grounds, maintenance, and mechanics. And um, they've done a, an incredible job with getting projects um, done throughout the summer and when school's out in um, February and April break that really contributes to taking items off of that building condition survey that we're not um, spending money on vendors coming in. It truly is. I mean, everyone knows, right? End of middle of August, right? I'm like breaking out in high as we all are, right? Because literally things are still falling from <laughs> right ceiling tiles. But somehow the team pulls through, right? And all those pictures that you saw in the very beginning, right? Those were all our guys. Right, it really just amazing, um, you know, to, to see the work progress, right, and ultimately, obviously, to see the end results. Um, you know, like Denise and, and um, Anthony just indicated, right, every break, right, that's happening, right, with you know, um, with different um, projects by our team. So, um, huge thank you, right, to Anthony, to you, you know, as, as well, right, in terms of leading the team and, and really establishing that vision. I think the key word that you mentioned beforehand, right, is that you know, proactively um, planning, right? Um, and taking a look at, okay, plans for now, you know, proactively, we know that our boilers are old, right? So what are some 
preventative measures that we can take, right, to really expand the life there, right? Or do some things, oh, you know what, that's going to be an issue probably two, three years down the line. Is there anything that we as a team can do now, right? So that ultimately, you know, we'll be in a better position in two years from now. Well, we definitely have to remove or replace this. How do we, you know, district plan for that financially, right, to, to do that so that we're not in an emergency situation, right? So I, I thank you, the team, you know, Denise, um, obviously the board, and again, this is a huge topic, right? Um, and as I mentioned beforehand, we can't do our business of educating our children without our buildings and grounds, right, being up to par. So the follow-up to this, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about capital reserve during our first budget presentation. Um, I do want to encourage everyone, right? Like there's our contact information in terms of facilities, right? Mr. Velasquez's contact information, um, Ms. Gillis, right? Um, so any facilities concerns, right? To reach out to our facilities uh, department um, so that you can, you know, it could be something that we're aware of and it could be something that we're not aware of, right? And then ultimately Anthony immediately goes out and he does a walkthrough, right? And he identifies and, and develops a plan, right? With the team on how to, how to address it. Um, and then as a board, as an admin team, we'll have our workshop meetings and dive deeply into the building conditions um, documents, you know, which is really, you know, like this big, right? Uh, but I think, you know, having our architects BBS there, kind of breathing life to it and Anthony knowing the nuances and the details in the background um, as a team, we'll be able to make informed decisions with regards to our priorities in terms of facilities. Anthony, I have a question for you. Have you ever compiled data? If your guys do a project mm -hmm. and it costs us twenty thousand dollars from the capital reserve, mm -hmm. have you looked at what it would have cost us if we have to go out and hire somebody to do that same job, so that we could justify a capital reserve fund by using our own money rather than paying sixty thousand or eighty thousand for that twenty thousand dollar job? It just lends more validity to a capital reserve. So if you could do something like that. Absolutely. Um, we actually done, uh, for example, like the brown students, we used, uh, I started doing it in the cafeteria. We would have that small fire. I kind of had quotes and how much it would be repaired. And then from there, we were able to do it ourselves with a fraction of what they charge us, as well as um, read the benefits of the rebates that we get through the lights. Um, same thing. It's a little bit more difficult when you start like, with the EPC that we have now because the LED light it's kind of hard to put a number on it. Um, but I can quote it out, but certain vendors are getting a little upset after I start asking them for quotes, and you know, I don't call them back. No. <laughs> you can do that, but what you can, yes, you know, it would be good for us to know how much it saved oh, us yeah, 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 yeah. to do it in there. I wonder if we have yeah, even, it's even like yeah. the, the, what they're writing on there and their creative cost. Yeah. If you're taking off and saying oh, we're doing it now, BBS said it would cost 20000 when we did it for us. Awesome. So not actually getting a quote for someone coming in, but oh, BBS is yeah. choosing those yeah. 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 Oh, I could definitely use the BBS numbers and take you on a broad number, so an actual number that we take. The numbers are pretty accurate. When when they say it's going to cost 400 it usually just costs maybe 500 Yeah, you know? But you could probably do it in-house for 150 Yeah, because a lot of those slides that said, Projects completed or in process were things that came right off of that building condition survey. So, so the ones that we did completed those numbers, I can actually get the exact number that we spent, and that'll give us a bit of a big savings. Two questions. I just bounce off that first. Um, nothing prouder than them to see in house people doing the work. And how how is it with staffing? You know, it's great to see that. They're doing mulch and doing landscaping, something that has been neglected for so long. To that extent, you know, the beautification of the outside of the building and then the updates on the inside. How are we staffing? It looks like you've developed a hit team that, you know, tackling these lists, but they're being pulled from other jobs as well, right? Uh, yes, sir. They're, they're, there's only so much time that they can do with so many projects they do. So it becomes kind of trigger to balance, you know, all these projects at once. Right. Um, staffing is definitely. Uh, important more bodies, um, title changes, stuff like that. These right. are roles that are definitely will help out if we can, or if it's possible. Because there's a savings taking place there. These are things that right. are only going to deteriorate and get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Know. And then, yeah, as part of now, as we go into in terms of this budget cycle, you know, by department, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's another piece, right? All of it is, is, is the consideration of that, right? I mean, 
Absolutely right. I mean, I think obviously that we write um, the discussion of additional, you know, uh, team members, right? Like right. Team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, we've talked about in terms of the grounds, and actually, I think we just said that, right? Because yeah. the same individuals, right, that are responsible for certain things, when other things happen, we pull them from that. We have to be like this, and all that, right? Like, you know, so then other things go by the side, right? So that's been part of the discussion as well. And again, you know, as we develop and plan for the next year's budget, right, the staff and the teams can be part of that. And then the other question I had was, um, and I saw a third question. But, yeah, yeah. Not, uh, yeah. So the uh, you know I know the bond project we were estimating about sixty four percent of the state on the qualifying for the uh, bond project yeah. with the capital reserves do those repairs that qualify yeah. would those get reimbursed by the state as well? Is that only for the bond? Yes. Yeah. 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 Capital projects yeah. would doesn't matter how it's funded. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter how it's funded. Okay. It can actually be funded by fund down coming over. Right. Okay. Okay. I think that's a good point to continue to make and present this because yeah. it, it coming back is again saving not really saving. And as part of all the future presentations, then we'll you know what we'll build into the newsletter and everything is with the emphasis so that there's no confusion that the establishment of the capital reserve doesn't mean that we're asking for this additional from the right. taxpayer, right? Right. 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 That, so that has to be crystal clear so that it's not, you know, misunderstood, whatever the amount is, right? The establishment of 1.5, whatever, right? Um, that it's, you know, in the clear language, right? Um, so that no one uses that in addition to, right? We can hold like that. Bill, we put in that um, proposition, that the second proposition, had no additional cost to the tax plans. Well, as 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 long as there's no additional cost at all, you can do the projects that are necessary to be done, as long as they're clarified in the uh, capital reserve fund propositions. I mean, just on the balance, but what? How are we limited to what we say on the balance? Well, that's going to be something that uh, you are all going to have to put together, and then we have to make it as as widespread as possible right. um because if you if you did it really the way the language is uh uh set forth you'd have a ballot that would be that long <laughs> with that project that we have here so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to re reuse broad language so that that language will fit our projects that fit that document thank you in the presentation, you mentioned the press box, okay. but there was nothing about the concession stand. And I know months ago we had looked at the options. We had very update on that, or we waited for something from the state. So we're meeting for that's part of the what we had listed that we're gonna open the workshop um piece, right? So so the concession stand yeah, is you know time used by students, right? It's not in our list of things we are as part of the DBS would be going into, right, you know, in terms of um, evaluating and, and whatnot. Uh, but yes, so that's part of one of our workshops. Um, in, in the prefab, right, like they actually, they, they shared with us, right, um, different pictures, right, and, and, and different options and things, right, um, but that's going to be part of the meeting. Yeah. There's that light bulb that is missing its light. Uh, I'm just, I only need to add that gets knocked over by the trailer being removed. Or what are you talking about? You can still see the, the concrete power. Still there. You want to go light? Yeah, there's all fall there. There's a cap on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'll take a look at it. I'll see if I can get it Yeah, I'm just curious. It's not a really tight document. Right, well, the construction kind of what we would need. Where, where, where that trailer was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, take a look at it. Yeah. 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 Other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, thank you. 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 Thank you.
One other presentation, um, actually really an update, right? This routine on uh, follow-up on the uh, women weeks. Yeah, quick presentation. The, obviously the senior high school gave a presentation early this year about the changes in the leaders exams. We anticipate that the changes are gonna remain. In other words, students who score uh, below a 65 from 50 to 65 will continue to be um, with the special dispensation exempt, they'll get passing credit. Um, we anticipate, the state hasn't released yet, we anticipate that going into next year, into next year, including next January. As such, the senior high school, and again, like the Board of Essence do, and they are looking to create the Regis exams being worth 10% instead of 15 to give students a better chance, but still make it worth something, um, to decrease it from 15 to 10% this year. And of course, uh, special education students and ELS will continue to be held harmless. So if it helps them, um, it helps them. If it doesn't, it won't be counted against them. So just an update on where they are with that. Any questions? Uh, not a question, but I just, I still, or maybe a question. I still didn't understand. I know, I know we spoke about um, the regents being harmless was it kind of made people not care to take the regents, right? That was the issue. Um, and then the other, the second part was that the scoring of the teachers is based on the regents, right? Am I correct when I say that? Part of their, was part of, part of their scoring was the region. So would it, and our grades were significantly better and for the students last year, wouldn't we be better off to uh, fix the APPR than to tend to put a 15% on students who haven't taken a region in their high school career? So I think um, twofold, right? I think the decision in terms of the weight of the regions, right? It's all of those discussions and meetings have been specifically looking at student grades, right? And ultimately what makes sense for, for students, right? You know, in terms of enrollment, right? APPR, even though I understand your point, right? That it is in terms of the current APPR as, um, you know, part of the legislator, right? It is, you know, a lot. It is actually being... Um, heavily looked at, right? I was at a meeting this morning um, and we are hopeful that for, not for the end of this school year, right? But that for next year, that um, it will not look as it looks right now, right? Um, and part of that, right, is um, there's different variations that are being floated around and being discussed and, and negotiated. Um, is you know whether or not that'll be in the mix, right, with regards to you know um, the use of regents exams, right? And again, it depends on kind of each district and whatnot. Um, so that hopefully, right, the whole APPR system gets just completely overhauled, right? I don't mean um, that an evaluation system wouldn't exist for teachers and principals, right? I mean that um, at the local level, right, that local school districts will be able to hopefully establish their own evaluation system for teachers and administrators as opposed to one tied to, you know, yeah. the way that it currently is right now. Um, so the sense that we got this morning, right, is that we're going to see some change, right? Um, they don't quite know exactly what won't be for the end of this school year, but probably in terms of for next year. And again, it's beyond because it, it's tied, right? They made it law, right? You know, and, and tied to finances and, and the budget and whatnot. So it's not as simple switch. Um, so in our end, again, our discussions at the building level are specifically in terms of looking at student data, right? Like we noticed earlier in the yeah. beforehand, right? In terms of taking a look at the recent results, taking a look at how it helps, you know, certain students, right? And special needs students in particular, right? Um, so it's pretty, pretty much reducing the percentage that we had before. Remember at one point we were 20%, then we went to 15%. So now our suggestion is to reduce to 10% where it still has you know, value too, right? It, um, but uh, isn't zero. Yeah, I don't know if that, if that is it. Does that answer? I guess my question was like, um, I don't understand how it harm, harmed any students. I think that's like, I know that when you guys did the presentation, Lucy had made the comment that realistically, I mean, it didn't, I, I think that there were students who were fighting for that hundred. I think that was a comment you made that there are the students who are AP students, students who have you know, really uh, done their entire school career based on that 97, 98 would still take the regents and still fight for that grade. And the students who needed the help, it helped. And then there were students in the middle who, you know, I'm not going to take it because I don't want to take it, of course. 
but I didn't see on the report, and maybe the numbers were different, it was a while ago, I didn't see one student who was worse because they didn't take the reasons. So that's why I don't know, I, I don't know how, I, I'm just confused as, oh, um, now it's going to be worth percent that that would be better for students if none of the students won. Yeah, it's it's a more complicated piece too because I think this 10% puts it more in line with a final exam, which is, I know it's not our final exam because it's the state's, but there are final exams that are worth a significant amount. And I think the thought process, and I hear exactly what you're saying, isn't so much because it does hurt some and it does help some, and that balance is really what we gave you as an average. But I think the, the idea here is to make it more of a final exam. So it is worth a cumulative sort of grade. Um, even though it's not our final exam, it's still a final exam. And this 10% puts it with parity with what a final exam might be worth. You know, midterms are worth a little less, um, and finals are generally worth a little more. So it's probably, not, I always say this, there's always a magic number there. You know, it's probably anywhere from five to 15, where that's the perfect number, depending on the kid in the class. But this 10, in my opinion, does put it more on par with what a final exam, independent of the region's piece. They had to take the test, though. Or is there an opt out of the test? I thought, I thought we, they, it, didn't, it didn't matter because yeah. if they got a zero, they could they got a zero. Correct me if I'm wrong. They did take the test. They have to take the yeah. test to get the region's credit, right. not right. not right. necessarily right. pass. Right. 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 Would you expel the APPR for the teachers? Um, am I, 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 yeah, right. I think it's two set. Yeah, it's two separate pieces because. Even the finals theoretically can be used for a PPR if you have a baseline measurement. So again, this is just the state's version of a final, which we don't have control over because we don't make it. But even final exams can be used for a PPR. But, la but last year, the concern, when I had asked the same question when we went over the report, the concern was, I don't remember if it was from members of the board or the presenters, but it was that if people didn't care and walked in and got zeros, that that would be part of the you know how do you how do you say oh yeah. part of the teacher's right. grade would be oh you gave straight zero so i think that was like i i, I understand how yeah. you said it was but i i was more concerned of now if we're going to have students failing um when we didn't have that last year we may have i don't remember the numbers exactly and and we're doing that just because of a grade that we're going to give that not a real grade re regardless i was just confused as to how this would help any students getting 10%, but that was better. But, uh, I get it for the Okay. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Chris, second, Matt, all those in favor? Second time discussion on 4810. I need a motion to waive the discussion and move the policy to the final draft. Roseanne? Kristen? All those in favor? Did I miss something? No, I don't know. People can have the idea I missed something. <laughs> Policy fourteen oh five. I need a motion to waive the discussion and move it to third time we're done. Chris, Matt, all those in favor? <clears throat> no, Policy fifty two eighty. I need it's way from all this. I don't have to read down. Yes, I'm just a bit now. I need a motion to move it to the third time adoption. Kathy, Roseanne, all those in favor? Whole business. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So for any new members of the audience, right? We selected this seat and selected this carpet, right? So now this is the pile. And remember, I couldn't recall right the stove was going right under, right? So it is the pile. So which one? So I'm going to kind of so that's the carpet. Okay. Carpet right here. Get rid of that. So this. 
Okay, so we got here. That's a good contrast. So we got here. Yeah, with the rug. Stop it. 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 Uh, no, I don't, but I did go over the bigger step, right, in terms of that I want to, could they show me kind of the whole thing and specifically in terms of the foot, so like, yeah, 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 I want. Okay, we are good. We will send this in. We have. Yes. We want it in for the spring concert again. Going in right now. I'm going to be sent over to them right now. Going in right now. That's all I had for old Denver. Okay. 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 But fifteen and one hundred B and fifteen hundred R are not updated on the website. And on the fifth day, On the permit. Okay. So on the first page, number four, and then on the bottom where it says for office use only, it's still says fifty one percent, not seventy six percent. And then I know we talked about filling out the actual application under the and I hate this. I hate the But this also says fifty one percent, not seventy six. So maybe we could. So the ones that are easier, the ones that are on the website are not the there ones that are on. The no, they are last reviewed in 2021. They're not the ones that were adopted in November. There's no November. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So one thing that is happening right now with our website obviously hasn't happened in terms of there because we have found a number of those issues, right? Yeah. Um. So we have started to remove those policies from different areas. So every administrator is, you know, is going through those, right? And then having syntax changes so that the link to door docs policy, right? It links over because ultimately it's so easy to miss, gets updated and, you know, like the board is out to you and you change it on board docs, but then a particular web page has a PDF version of it, right? So the whole admin team has been charged with looking through their website, looking through their specific area, and then reaching out to our staff firms so we then have a link right over. So this is, you know, we can do that. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay, so that means no new business. Statement of residents come up. State your name and address come up to the podium. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just read my residents wishing to share a statement to come forward, state your name, your address, and any organization that may be represented at the meeting. Write your name and address on the index card and present to them. Thank you. Thank you. Before to this statement, residents will be given up to the minute to share the statement. Please be aware. Matters relating to individual hearings and including the announcement of such and a public school meeting. Residential public questions will be provided with the name of the appropriate person in on the chain of communication. Now, a chain of communication, this can be found on our website in Hockey Department on the information desk by the front end. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, my name is Anthony Rockmanado. Um, the letter 238 shows the street West Alpine, obviously. I am president of the West Alpine Football Booster Club that was newly established two November ago. And my board is here sitting behind me. Um, we have done an outstanding job of trying to reestablish and give our football players and athletes a great atmosphere and a great um, um, time and, and in a way to um, experience something that they haven't experienced before. Because the, the booster club was really non-existent. 
But with that said, um, um, I've noticed in your presentation today through uh, buildings and grounds that the things I was going to bring up were discussed, um, which is great. Um, we were going to talk about our football tower that was behind the middle school and the concession stand. And hopefully by September, we have everything up and running. Because last football season, our four home football games were a disaster. From our point of view, from the fans' point of view, a taxpayer's point of view. Um, I know you guys have a lot going on. Obviously, there's a great plan, five year plan that Anthony has put together. Um, it's great to see somebody's taking initiative to put some kind of meeting the second about his building. Um, again, our, our point of view here is trying to get that tower back up and running. Hopefully, that can happen. And that concession will for our pains. And my second point was the back. Ground of the middle school, like we spoke about it. the handball courts, the basketball courts, um, everything else, the, the paving, the fencing. It's just, it's just, it's a terrible idea to go back there. It was terrible. And um, hopefully that could all be taken care of sooner or later. Um, that's all I have. Thank you for your time. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I need a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor? Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Right, at least I guess they figured it was like after dinner. So I'm <laughs> 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 